Walk Jam, Nitty Gritty, you're listening to the boy from the big bad city. This is Jam Hot. This is Jam Hot. Welcome to Who's Hot with your host, Will Chung. Thank you for downloading the latest UK OCR Who's Hot podcast. My name is Will Chung and we're here with Chris and with Becky to discuss the Spartan Super Henley on Thames that's happened this weekend. It was the first race of the UK UK OCR series, first race of the Spartan series and the first race of the Spartan Age Group series. Chris, hi, how are you doing? Yeah, not so bad, Will. Becky, you are right? Hiya. Hey Becky. Uh, Becky, we're going straight over to you. Let's, let's start talking about the race. Um, first of all, map. Um, of course, we were talking to uh, Karen when she was on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago about how they're changing up the, the map and you being our, our map guru love a good map, but there was no no obstacles on there. How was that for you? Did it change anything up or did it kind of make you kind of work a little bit harder? Yeah, I mean, I tried to embrace it at first, and then my mind wandered. I was like, oh, surely I can figure this out. <laughs> and then I got too busy. I was like, no, just just go with the flow. Um, and then I was very busy, and I didn't try um, until I was there. And then people started to say, well, of course, everybody saw the map from yesterday or something, or, uh, you know, we could figure it out anyway from doing it the day before or from talking to people who had seen a picture or something and I was like oh so I was really lent into the surpriseness of it um which was fine actually during the race I was I was kind of content with that um but I was still trying to figure out as I was running I suppose um I was particularly surprised that there were no carries until like the end essentially um but I was I guess that was a happy surprise but I also knew that they would be there so <laughs> I thought it was going to be a lot close together um uh yeah so I only really saw what was you know near the start and and near the end and from whatever I'd seen on social media from the from the age group race um sorry from the uh beast race the day before but then I was like well I don't know which ones of those are in super because there's all like the fun ones like ape hanger and stairway to sparta with the bits on you know the climbing holds and i like and the irish table on the start of the cargo net vertical cargo net i was like great all of these look amazing and i was like they're not going to be in the super are they but they're right there and so it was a bit of a tease even though we didn't see the map <laughs> <laughs> And Chris, what I, I mean, you you're one of those people that you don't really care about the map, but uh, any particular surprises and anything that that was fun or you know that that, that kind of took you by surprise uh, at Spartan Super? Uh, no, it was all pretty pretty standard, really. Um, we all got a bit of a gist of what was coming up. We spoke to a lot of people who ran the beast as we mm. was doing the uh, entry into it, so we kind of knew what the barbed wire call was going to be. We saw what the um, the the where all the obstacles were there was a bit of a gauntlet in one section we knew that was going to be towards the end because we all sort of had a run around on the warm-up so there wasn't really too much surprises um and it's spartan obstacles so there's there's never going to be anything that really mm. catches you out so yeah i was wondering kind of what you know karen was saying old new things and I, was, was that just the the hurdle which is just like you a, want that got reviewed over uh, released on the um instagram, on the instagram. new obstacle yeah. and the uh, directions and how to get over a hurdle yeah i love that although <laughs> i was surprised though when i actually went over it that it was angled so that the point was up not flat at the top so like yeah. the square was pointing up and i was like oh that's definitely more uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. um, i thought i thought they just had a few leftover crates that they just managed to bodge something together so <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I would have. I was secretly hoping it would just be a tough mudder obstacle, and I was like, really trying to, like, because they're there, and we we did see them. Well, we did see them, or yeah. even the beast races even got to hang off of them, just not in their actual tough mudder form. So that was a bit of a tease. So I, I saw. I saw um, it was an ape hanger that was um, mm -hmm. funky monkey, which you guys didn't get to I do in, in, funky in monkey. Super. Yeah, and um, what was um, what was Block Ness? Was was that a particular? Was it a private didn't, traverse didn't or anything? Or did you not see it? Didn't oh. see that on Super. There was a, a a mud pit with a hill. Um, yeah, quite quite early on, a couple of. And that, couple that's that's the only bit of mud that that's at uh, at that place because it's as you saw, it's very shaly, mm. isn't it? it? It's just quite yeah. hard rocks rather than any sort of mud. That's the only bit of mud and tough mud of london west anyway but i think generally just before that part that bit of mud is where block ness normally is 
they did have a water trough and we went we dipped mm. under right the scaffolding but you didn't have to put your head under or anything uh, so it was just a little mini swim but not yeah. not the dunk wall did did a dunk wall come later then i guess that was the dunk wall you just don't have to dunk you didn't <laughs> it was immersion yeah, it. not submersion yeah yeah it's quite quite long wasn't it so so maybe that will be yeah that might be block nest because it had the cargo net to get out of the water in similar to block nest so it might just be one rotating thing yeah what 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 is interesting chris and uh, and becky you talked about the the gauntlet towards the end and and that's something that i think they always do at that because is that really long bit of uh flat part isn't there and i'm assuming you would have gone up and down uh to make a tm sign maybe as a carry going up um that that bit which is generally killer gorilla then the mm. gauntlet back, back to the finish so um you know that that was of no surprise what what obstacles were were there and um i i guess maybe let's talk about the rig as well maybe yeah the bit that you're talking about is like the valley where the, the there's actually a tarmac path just along the side which is really good for the spectators that's right um, yeah. where the gauntlet kind of started we ran down that really steep hill um and and then kind the of a little loop to do the monkey bars um and then it came into or kind of a back up the hill across the top down again which is where they normally do the killer gorilla killer gorilla killer gorilla for tough mudder which actually tough mudder has gone up and down that way more times than we did um and that went into the spear throw which was everyone found pretty tricky i think only jack carpenter and samuel costella uh yeah international Con connor wickens hit that and connor well. wickens yeah right? it was four fences wide which is supposedly standard but we had done shorter ones than that before um but the hay bale was half the width as normal so it was kind of rectangular vertical shape with the the hay obviously wrapped in rather than any foam or metal targets like they might have in america um and the penalty for that was actually a bucket carry for the first time yeah, um, actually, well. yeah yeah it was quite good yeah i went up the hill um I think only one person said it was quite short <laughs> compared to burpees. Um, but because it went straight into the actual bucket carry, which was up the other hill, which is where you knew from Tough Mudder that hill, um, which was longer. And so doing them back to back, which most people did, was a, was definitely tiring. And I was slow and got overtaken. <laughs> then that went that. into the other hill, which was Devil's Beard, which is a Tough Mudder obstacle, basically, Ooh. where you crawl under that really long net. Mm. and uh i mean having already done the barbed wire crawl earlier which was soul destroyingly long uh this was probably worse because you're on your own most of the time um that's a good obstacle to do if you're near somebody um but a lot of people especially in the women's field were quite spread out yeah um, so it's quite hard work going under all those nets then we you want to do you want to continue the rest We've yeah keep going yeah yeah to, <laughs> to the, i'm just reciting the map <laughs> I don't know how you can remember it. It's crazy. <laughs> on down the hill from from that into the sandbag carry, which was up again around a little tree, down down again into the rope climb, or was it the lift first, the hoist? There was a hoist. Rope first, climb. Think. Okay, rope climb or hoist? Uh, oh, you could be right. Rope climb. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Chris, I think Becky will be right. <laughs> sandbag. <laughs> top, top the sandbag off. <laughs> climb the rope. Um, which I think I was actually more tired climbing the rope then, probably because there's just a lot of kind of carries uh, quite soon before it. Um, but it was fine. And then into the hoist, which seemed okay. I don't think anyone, I didn't hear people, you know, in previous Spartan races, it's been like, oh my goodness, it was so heavy this time, or the pulleys were tricky, or things like that, or we weren't allowed to put our feet on the. But I didn't get any of that this time. So that seemed pretty smooth and quite well placed in, for an obstacle. Because after that, we did the balance. And you really want to be kind of calm on that balance mm. um and there was a penalty associated with that so you don't get another chance on that one uh so it's really you have to get it right first time make sure you put your foot on the way down and everything and then we did the slip wall so you get into the water and then, then did we go miss up. out the um oh, did i miss one the atlas stone oh yeah another ah. <laughs> well done Got one on you. <laughs> <laughs> i just try and cancel carries from my brain <laughs> the atlas yeah well done uh where was that then before the balance was, yeah i think it was before the balance yeah but they're, they're literally back to back well in that valley mm -hmm. um and we had some quite run long running sections before this in yeah. the middle of the race so mm, yeah no, it's hard to position obstacles when you've got a venue with limitations um but it was pretty intense but good for spectators at the end then up the hill down the hill over the a-frame cargo there which wasn't webbing it was rope this time yeah it was different wasn't it 
Yeah, and they had these nice little covers on the edges saying, do not touch after all that fiasco in America. <laughs> yeah. And you can fit three rolls down. I did learn that from social media. media. Thank you, Primal Fitness. Um, and then I did do it in the race. <laughs> and run around the corner slash jog very slowly for me and do the rig, which the had multi -rig. a multi-rig. Yeah, which was actually a multi-rig. It had at least three different attachments on it. Is that, that the first time we've seen this in the UK, the multi-rig? I can never remember. For me, yeah. I'm pretty sure. We've had ones with bars and rings, but this is the first time we've had three things. What were the three different attachments? So we had two rings to traverse bar, um, to two rings, to two ropes, to the bar. I think actually it was the same multi-rig that they used in the 3K championships yeah. over in the States. Yeah, so it was pretty Except much the same there. all of our athletes actually held the attachments, not above the attachments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did it, have a, it might have had a ball in america no no i think it was, it was two rows yeah yeah, yeah. Sorry, same. yeah but except they all just held the top the, the top <laughs> so i'm glad that everyone did it properly including the people who who didn't succeed on it like i appreciate that people will try to do it as intended even if there is no rule that says you don't have to do that so i think that's you know really good integrity for the sport and for our, our kind of fellow competitors so thanks everybody yeah. We frown upon that in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't help you when you go to European Championships. <laughs> yeah. So we've got the provisional uh, results for the UK OCR series. Becky, do you want to just go through top 10 female? Okay, great. So it pretty much almost reflects um, the elite results. So remember, the elites are combined time with uh, the age group results. So first place, Rachel Decker. Um, so she gains the maximum points, which is 500 this year. Uh, second place, very closely, who was leading up until that final rig, Andrea Berkez, four, six, five points you get for second. Then Ellen Wells, four, three, five. Um, Federica, four, one, five. Josie Lloyd, 400. Kate Stilwell, um, 385. And then um i've got another name here oh that's a male okay no cara macquarie um it'll be the next points down then me and then tamar actually so if we're taking some of the elites there uh then libby then lou then pip um then cheryl beach who raced age group and and then there's no other elites that kind of oh there's one elite further down um so that kind of then molds into the age group results as they would have crossed the line so um, how how was your race then because um eight, eighth place uh overall uh i know that you ran the marathon before so was this uh a target for you in terms of a race or, or actually was it more about London marathon was you on tired legs were you happy with the result were there some things that possibly you thought you could have done better yeah i mean i didn't do anything badly like none of the i didn't fail in the thing i just i just wasn't fast enough and my legs were tired yeah but yeah. um that was my choice to do london marathon and i probably would have been beaten by a lot of those people anyway <laughs> if i hadn't done it um, i was definitely being overtaken uphill as usual <laughs> um, yeah but we did have a bit of a battle um a couple of kind of overtaking swaps and with me and Karen and uh, Libby was near there as well behind us. Uh, I did start well actually. <laughs> I got to the I got out of the first set of the you know, over under threes first somehow. I didn't get there first but um, I just like to find a good bit of space on the obstacles and then yeah I went through the woods and then Andrea and Feddy overtook me and then Josie and then we overtook them back at the men's field at the hay bales uh, and then everyone else passed me up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I think Libby actually overtook about five people on the barbed wire crawl. She was really fast. And I know Karen's really fast with the barbed wire. Um, and Ellen and Josie. I know all of I've seen them do it before. I don't know how they do it that fast. Uh, we're all pretty cautious about our clothes, actually. I think even the men were doing that as well. But it was so long. And that really, I could feel that in my legs, like my hamstrings and my quads felt like they'd done a marathon when crawling. How far was it? Like 30 meters uphill when the yeah. barbed wire was pretty low. Yeah. yeah, it's really good having a barbed wire crawl uphill. Let's let's, let's talk about that because um I uh, put out a post on British Obstacle Sports members page, uh, asked for some feedback on the races. One of the main bits of the feedback, and we'll talk about the other bits, was about the barbed wire crawl. And one, it was very low, which I think is a good thing. But two, should it still be barbed wire? Because as you just said, Becky, uh, you know, people are being very careful about their clothes. 
maybe they don't want to get cut on the head and things like that. Should we do away with barbed wire? Should it just be power cord or something else? Yeah. Totally get away with it. Get away. Go, go, go. I've got a very yeah, strong opinion on this myself. I think it should go. I'm yeah. sick of getting clothes ripped. Yeah, I've got a scar on my back from the same venue from when Tough Mudder had a barbed wire crawl there and I had to wear one of the, you know, the tougher mudder vests. Yeah. And so the vest was oversized for me. And that got caught and it dragged me back into it. Like it Ooh. pulled me back. And that's, and I've got a, a lifelong scar <laughs> from that. Um, yeah. But yeah, people, there was somebody there at the weekend with an eye injury. So yeah, wow. like, it's unnecessary. Yeah, it is unnecessary. Still have, we can still have a race with paracord or anything. Well, even just wire, even just wire crossing over, it will do the yeah. same thing. We'll all have to crawl underneath it. We Another race. Ourselves. Yeah. Other races have taken out the bobs, you know, so it, it is happening in OCR. It's on, yeah, I don't think anyone feels less tough for not having, or less strong for not having barbed wire. No, that's right yeah. yeah there's no need for it yeah just, and just going through some of the um the feedback here nathan hawkins um thanks for your feedback nathan overall a great event one major course niggle with the bobbed wire cord really think they need to go away from uh, move away from the bobbed wire keep the cord but just use normal wire or, or even power cord the wire yeah. was so low and loose and me being just that bit bigger i was snagged whichever technique i use so i uh so more ruined clothes brand new team vest um which just mm. takes the edge of an otherwise awesome weekend and again there's yeah. there's lots of the same sort of um comments just just like that in terms of the barbed wire but i i think you're right it it's not any less tough or macho just going under power cord it, you know keep it low uh it, it's it does its job by slowing people down and and kind right. of using different muscle groups that's the whole point of it isn't it mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and you know being put uh being injured is is you know an unfair disadvantage i i, I think you guys are right yeah well, there, there shouldn't be a reason why people are getting lifelong scars like yourself becky that's not it's not really a thing that people should get from a race yeah unless they think and it's the same with clothes i mean well, there was a lot of jokes going around in the event village and we were saying well next time they at spartan do it we should all bill them yeah. just send them an invoice of how many shorts and t-shirts that we get yeah. to go through because i've gone through thousands and i was and going slower so i didn't rip my shorts because they're my favourite shorts or whatever. Yeah, well, I've, I've just bought a new pair. I've just bought a new pair for this yeah. season. And I was like, oh, and I've got a little bum. I was a little baby bubble bum. So, you know, it's, and it was still yeah. catching. Yeah, I've, I've, seen, I've seen that little bum pass, pass me by at uh, nuts. And yeah, <laughs> they, they're very fetching in those shorts as well, Chris. Bubble, 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 bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I got, I got something from Tamar here. I agree with the barbed wire run, ruining rest started off carefully and this is kind of what what you were saying becky i started off carefully but by the end it was costing me too much time trying to be mm, careful yeah. i love the challenge of it being uphill though and i think we all love a crawl uphill well in, in terms of a challenge i guess more than anything else yeah. but i think that's the thing isn't it? if if people not so careful it, it's it's going to shave a bit of time time for them but you know it's, it's yeah. not worth an injury at all and also like i mean i work at a place where if there's any blood around it's a big who are you know there's, there's gloves there's procedures there's things you know we don't want to transfer any diseases between people so if somebody cuts themselves in front of you and then you go and cut yourself on the same piece of barbed wire and and you don't know you know it's it's not safe it's not helpful. yeah it's not totally a sanitary honest. i don't know how you get away with it no really yeah so, so plenty more things about the obstacles and, and feedback about the obstacles. But Becky, do you want to just go through the um, top 10 of the men and then Chris will go over to you, just talk about your your race and how you how you got on? Because honestly, I I, I had you both in my top five. Um, so you well, both let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that too. <laughs> I, was like, I, was, I was going through the results. I had to sorry about this. I was, was like, aiming. <laughs> 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 I, I don't have an excuse though, Becky. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> well, you know, it probably would have happened anyway. So I've got the, the mail. I've got the elite results here. I don't have the points yet just now, but they'll be out by the time you've listened to this. I expect. Um, super. We've got, is it Christian? Yes. From Laura? Uh, and then I've got him down uh, as British here. Yes, it says it might just been where he's registered right. when he when he logged in. Um, then Olian Stefan, then Samuel Costello, who's visited quite a few times now to race mm -hmm. in Spartan Race UK. Then um, Jason Brennock, uh, Morgan Maxwell, Carl Bell, Jack Carpenter, Dassel Scanella, Connor Wiggins, Barry Buchanan. And uh, that's the top ten, but 
then there's Darren Martin um, just outside as well as the next Brit. Um, where were you? 20th? I'm way down there, yeah. 20th? 20th, yeah. yeah. A good battle with James Burton, though, I can see here. James, Kenny. Kenny did well, Kenny Sams. Matt Roberts is just ahead. Sam yeah, he was, having a, he was racing really fantastic. Yeah, good running. So 14th, Scott, Scotty Parker, 15th, Sam, Sam Clark, Young Sam, 16th. Yeah, good. Chris, it was tell me, very... tell me about your race. Tell, tell me about about the men's race in total. But tell, tell me about your race. Well, I won't speak too much about my race. I mean, uh, I didn't do as well as I was hoping to do. But then I haven't really been doing that sort of training for that type of event. So as upset as I am, I shouldn't be as upset as I have been over the last couple of days because it's not where I should be at in this time of the year. Mm. And I've been training for Euros, and Spartan is black and white towards Euros. So yeah. But the race, the race was super competitive. I mean, I don't think we've seen a Spartan race with that many super fast quality races in a long, long time. It's probably the best field we've had since way back in 2015. Um, yeah, I mean, it started so fast. I mean, everyone shot off like a bat out of hell. Um, I think at the front, I mean, the guys at the front were running super fast. Um, Morgan Maxwell, he was having a fantastic race. Darren Martin was having a fantastic race. I think in that top five, it could have gone either way until the spear throw. I spoke to a lot of people after the race and they said that because a lot of people missed the spear throw, I think the three people that got it was Samuel Costello, uh, Connor Wickens and Jack Carpenter was the only three elite races to actually hit the spear. And I think that's where the main change of the race happened. Um, and then I think the rest of the positions change just on the carries. So I'm just going to get the bucket carry times up. Oh, nice. Yeah, I definitely Ooh. say that um, Like it, it was very apparent to me in this race that the obstacles are no longer differentiating the people in the elites. Like in, in the women's race previously, where there has been more penalties happening, but basically everybody completed everything. Yeah. Except the spear. So it was running. And I guess from what you guys, what you guys are saying, they've the course was and again feedback from um someone on the british obstacle sports uh, facebook page very runnable towards the end and then if you've got that gauntlet then that's when you know again spear throw or something else is going to make that change but you know the rest of that course you're saying you know right up to those carries which was becky said right at the end and of course that's going to make the difference when everyone now is such a good runner and you know the other obstacles are almost you know just a little annoying shall we say yeah. uh it, it is once you get to those things that would make a bit of difference you know a strength obstacle will make that little bit of difference compared to maybe like the eight hang or, or anything else that, that's going on so chris uh bucket carries times that's right i mean as well um i forgot to mention that the race i, I would describe it as kind of a cross-country race uh there was hardly it, it it was very grassy and up and down not it didn't really have any technical running at the start or actually all throughout the race anyway. So I think that allowed a lot of people to put pedal to metal and really get out mm. there. But yeah, the, but, uh, the, what am I saying? The bucket carry. Yeah. So the bucket carry after the spear throw, uh, probably changed the order of everyone. Jack Carpenter whacked out a super quick time of like one minute 18. And I think because he hit the spear, put down a super quick time on the, uh, bucket carry mm. that got him into the position. Where was he? Seventh Becky? Seventh. Yep. And I think that's what really changed the race up. Morgan Maxwell, he put down a 155, keeping him into fourth. Mm -hmm. But the rest mm -hmm. of them, Darren Martin had a bit of a slower one. I think that's what cost him because apparently he was battling in for that fourth position. Oh. So, yeah, there was a few guys battling for fourth and fifth. Mm -hmm. And I think it was down to the carries. Everyone was in the 156. Isn't it? And, and that's just where people pipped ahead. But everyone must have been gassed by the time they got there. With all that running at the start, flat out, then you get to a few obstacles. I mean, the obstacle started after that spear throw and then you're going into carry. So that's going to like take everything out of you. All your matches are going to be burnt. Mm -hmm. So nasty yeah, race. It was, it was a tough, it was basically like a, I don't know, like a 3K race at the end of yeah. uh, at the end of a run. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're giving maximum effort. And then at the end, you've got all these obstacles in one sort of, sort of situation. And, you know, whoever's just like... Are you complaining? Am I complaining? <laughs> <laughs> it was just a very, it was like a race of two halves almost, or three. Yeah, three yeah, halves, definitely. Maybe. Yeah. So talking about flat out, let's talk about that start, because I know that there's a really long, nice long flat bit before you start to get into the woods and then up the hill. Mm -hmm. Karen mentioned that there might be something on that flat. 
Um, but then I've seen again on lots of feedback that maybe that first set of obstacles probably a little bit too close to the beginning. Yes, how I mean, far, how far was that? Two hundred meters. Two hundred meters. Is that all? Yeah, wow. it went. It was slightly wider than the start has been in the past. Like it, it was wide enough for us to all run, and there was three walls, so three essentially lanes. You can fit mm. two people on them, but not if you're throwing your legs over. Again, nah, I, I, I got caught up. I got caught up with yeah. uh, one fellow as well. And you got to be kind of nice a little bit. You don't want to be yeah. too evil in the head. So not at the start. Yeah. Not at the start, no. Or ever. Um, well, I don't know. I like to give Mark Dixon a kick in the head every now and again. <laughs> but so, I, I mean, we, but we, all know, we all know how far that, that run out is. They could have pushed that back to maybe five, six, seven hundred meters, surely. Be, even just before the tree line, something like that. Yeah, I mean, that probably wouldn't have been that far in actual distance but yes they could have done there was another wall after it the higher wall how, how high is it eight foot mm. um so that was another so there was two sets of obstacles um in in that first runnable bit but it's probably only 300 meters across the field i think the trees. Probably, they probably didn't realize that that because we haven't had starts like that, that for many. years in spartan so right. i mean that it many. might have been a might have been a miscommunication they're just like used to having it the way it is and didn't realize that so many people were going to be hitting it at the same time so yeah i mean it is it is it was predictable like <laughs> we knew that would be the first obstacle even without karen telling us we, we knew that is. We, we, knew, <laughs> we knew that it would be a fast start and we knew that the, the number of people on the start line so it, it could be just a bit further back even if that second wall was closer to the to that to those three over under throughs or right next to the to the trees but so know. did you have another obstacle after that foot you so say you you run yeah. the flat bit you're into the trees and then you're turning right Forever, so, you turn left. so so there's probably another obstacle there hey bales. Did they not have hey bales. But you can only fit one person on the hay bale at once and um the men were on it so <laughs> still yeah did we go off we didn't go off at the same time though did we? no and we and i tried to slow them down and give extra time because there was quite a few a big weight a range of men on the elite men's start line really so we wanted to leave a little bit extra time to prevent that but that's what we hit them but they did let us go past because then after that we had uh another wall didn't we the uh incline one where you yeah what's it called where you have to like pull yourself over and then it was the bar fire yeah which is when then that's when i think the race really started to uh, even out a little bit because yeah, after you got out of that got yeah from there basically you got stuck. No, I mean, like, I was no longer in the mix at that point. No. Yeah. See, I managed to pass a lot. Of, well, I managed to catch up with a lot of people on the barbed wire crawl, and then nice. everyone just started running again. <laughs> yeah. But there were some really nice running sections. Like, the first. No, there pass. wasn't. When? <laughs> there was really nice running. Was it? <laughs> yeah. If you like, think it was nice, slow as me, there's, easy there's running lots trails, of yeah. Like, <laughs> muddy, kind of bit wider than a single track through the trees with the bluebells like out the back from the fields like going down the side of the fields and i thought it was nice running <laughs> i think i've spoiled the choice down here in the south downs so, okay. so that was a start. it wasn't stinging nettles as well i mean no that's nice as that was a start um what about the end and uh the the controversy around the the, the multi wig um well the main question is the penalty being too short for the duration mm. that the rig takes and people having a proper their best attempt at it you know if they fail on the last bit which is the most tricky bit with the with the ropes there's a range of people um who might think oh well, i'm never going to do that so they just touch the first one and come off and then sprint the the short penalty run and cross the line ahead of somebody who might progress further on the obstacle and either complete it or just not complete it and then be beaten yeah, I and i mean that did affect the result of the elite women's race it was exciting to watch and both athletes were trying their the hardest um and if you know yeah if andrea had done the penalty she would have sooner if she dropped if she'd yeah, given she up early, straight away she would have and she might have still won even rachel, though yeah. rachel completed the obstacle and i mean i think god we got integrity with the women and that but i do yeah. believe in the men's age group there was quite a lot of people on the traverse and I do believe that people were taking the penalty mm. and still getting past people who Completely. had just started queued up. Yeah. yeah. So they were able to pass people who had just queued up 
on the penalty whilst going past. So wow, yeah. So I do do remember a lot of people saying a lot of a lot of beef about that. So, I mean, it's it's a traverse... slightly longer penalty then. Yeah, yeah, the traverse yeah, is quite a slow longer. obstacle, though, isn't it? Traverse is quite slow, so you'd need a, a much longer uh, penalty on that. And that's reflected um, within a lot of the comments. Again, for, thanks for the feedback, guys. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, Megan Bowman, generally felt the winning only penalties were too short. Ladies who started the penalty as I got to an obstacle were finishing it before I landed off the obstacle. My obstacle speed is pretty efficient. Um, as my running is a bit slower, I was generally in the mid group where most ladies around me were failing the obstacles and I still couldn't get ahead until mm. the carry section at the end. Um, Rachel Fisher, um, where was it? Uh, I enjoyed the race feedback, longer run at the start to thin the field out. Um, we've said that, oh, we'll come back actually to, to Rachel's uh, <laughs> in, in a second. There were more about the, oh, Jack, Jack Carpenter. Hello, Jack. Um, I like the loops. However, we all know 30 burpees is around about one, one and a half minutes for even the quickest athletes. Mine's twice that probably. Yeah, mine's a lot more than that, but I'm not a quick athlete. 200 meter penalty loop in some cases is an advantage if you can't do the obstacles. And again, I, I think, again, it's reflected that some of those uh, penalty loops are pro one a bit short and some need, need to be a bit longer, but also they were talking about maybe working the same muscle groups in, in some mm -hmm. way or form as well. So possibly, I, I don't know, getting a, a, a different carry in there, maybe a crawl or something rather than just a running loop. Because again, mm -hmm. what has everyone said about Spartan uh, most recently? It's all about the running now. So a running loop, maybe not quite the right penalty, but I'm personally very glad they're taking out burpees. Yeah, yeah I think, I, I mean, that's, a bit of feedback that's maybe gone unnoticed but the the lack of people saying we need the burpees back <laughs> is also <laughs> feedback so i think yeah. people are okay with the fact that it's a running penalty it's just the duration of it or the, the challenge of it and spartan has taken a step in that direction like for example the bucket carry penalty that we had and there were some ones which went off down the side down a hill and back up again which were not quick so i think you know it, it they are improving on that and it's still not <laughs> as hard yeah. as another obstacle course race, but um, it's it's going to need work. I mean, the thing is with yeah. having penalties which Unless. require different muscle groups is you're going to have to have the marshals to to yeah. to govern it and that. So, you know, they're, they're things that do need to think. I do know that people that without cues on these obstacles, though, when people were getting to them, a lot of the elites who did do the penalties were saying that they were putting a lot of effort in. So they, putting that effort in did reflect it. But if you're waiting at an obstacle then the time difference is a bit, a bit yeah mm. and it's good it is going to affect like the ukcr series points like megan was saying it's taking her longer to complete the obstacle successfully than someone to to, to do the penalty so she, she's gonna miss out on points even though she is the better obstacle course yeah. racer um you know if you look at it that way but the other people might be playing the game or they're not they just they just they just can't do it and they you know happened to benefit from that uh, which isn't their fault either it's just it's just how the system is the rules are. so yes yeah, so it needs it needs intervention from spartan but it, i think it's starting but it's still spartan but you know it's really well organized you know yeah. it was i think it's easy to pick up one or two negative things but overall there was loads of things that went really well yeah. so no let's go the coffee though no no cost. Cost. that was a big a lot of people were really upset about that myself uh, the sprint competition type thing or the fact that it wasn't Costa. It was just, there just was no free coffee. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it a European sponsor that that new energy drink E4 or something, is it? I've seen it on some European races this year. That's what you get for free at the end. Did um did you get to go on the laser pistols? I did. They yeah. weren't working when I was there. Oh shame. Um yeah. Figure it out. Like? So um did, did you have a sight? On the laser pistol yes so the, there's a front, a front one and a back one like yeah. like it would do on a normal pistol no normal gun i've never touched a normal gun i don't want to um no, plastic you gun. can no <laughs> never played cowboys and robbers <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i think that might have been the first gun type thing i've ever touched yeah um but you can look on the echo eco aims website and you can look them up it's got the spartan logo and the world obstacle logo you can get the the trigger pressure you can get the weight of the thing you can buy one um i obviously looked that all up beforehand even though it's not in the race um and 
it's different it's different from biathlon it's different you know there's they've got optical things they've got laser ones they've got long ones they've got ones with select ones without they've got different weights and everything um so this was specifically made for ocr or they, this is what's used or is going to be used at world obstacle and spartan races this, this is the standard one so that'll be the same so i think it was quite heavy and that's why you're allowed to hold it with two hands because um i have a colleague who is a international archer is also a biomechanist scientist so he's got lots of things for practicing and, and playing with and we were talking about technique beforehand and you know how in other in other events you're not allowed to hold it with two hands you have to hold it with one hand and how you always face side on um so i tried that out as well um but it was actually kind of heavy it up, it? yeah i saw a lot of that as well Break yourself bow, bow. I just sorry <laughs> getting carried away it's tempting i apparently uh, not, not for me um so yeah i i because i've seen all these pictures of people holding it with two hands i'm like why are you doing it like that like you're farther away and you're not using your dominant eye and anyway but now i get it because it's kind of heavy and imagine being in the middle of a race it's steady everybody chris is trying to shoot me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep it steady. I, I, yeah i'm gonna record well i do record the video so this this bit is <laughs> going to go on UKOCR. <laughs> yeah. i want to be like freeze Put your hands up. <laughs> um, let, let, let's get back to the race because the, the last thing I want to touch on uh, before coming back to you guys um, is about the, this final thing and going back to Rachel Fisher's comment. Um, I climbed the frame with permission, but pretty sure I wasn't allowed to last year. So a horrible fall when someone tried to jump from the step and fall back into it. Penalty loop should be mm -hmm. tougher longer. Uh, 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 we've talked about that bit. And I think just hold on one sec. I'm just scrolling down. There was another one. Yeah, I've heard that feedback um, from a couple of different people. Yeah, Karen, Karen Macquarie, great race. Some of the penalties were faster than the rigs, especially the multi-rig. Also, I changed also I changed I think they changed the rules between elite and age group with regards to using frame to get onto the high rigs, monkey bars and beaters. Bit of a pain as was much better at the end of last year with the platform for small folk, smiley face. And that's true. Mm. I am very short, so I like to use the uh, the and any platform to, to get to the top. But uh, Becky, Chris, your, your thoughts on kind of frame, no frame, platform, no platform and how that helps or hinders, especially mm. short people. Yeah, I mean, it was obvious, I think, to everybody in the women's race we couldn't reach any of the obstacles even with the steps and i'm not i'm not one of the shortest competitors um so i had to jump to every obstacle except for the rig because that one has things that dangle down a couple of feet um and you so i i was it was in my head when i was standing on the step i couldn't jump to the first hold i certainly couldn't jump to the second one like some some of the men do in the videos on on instagram um so i had to just jump really carefully to the to the top scaffolding to start the obstacle and some of the other elite races have did hurt themselves doing that they jumped and slipped and landed on on their backs and that might have happened at multiple times um and that does affect the rest of your race it just gets in your head it also hurts so <laughs> you can't do it as fast and you've you failed the obstacle um so that was the situation we were in we had to jump um because that's the rules and then i think that changed uh, at some point quite early on um near the start of the age group race and in the, in enough soon enough for the elite races to still be able to see other people having a different uh option um of course if you are somebody that's given that option by a marshal then you would then you would take it you know you've been mm -hmm. said you can do that and i'm sure yeah. we would do that if if we were given the option at the start of the race so it's it's no fault of of those athletes um because they were in the same situation as and we were, we just jumped and succeeded or jumped and, and hurt ourselves um so yeah I think if you can't reach the obstacle, you should be able to climb it, and that's fine. I think there was a limit to how much they could climb, um, and it, and it is slow climbing up the scaffolding and getting onto the obstacle. Um, so I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think, yeah. But the thing is, there shouldn't be any consistency. Why, yeah, there shouldn't be any reason why anyone shouldn't be able to reach an obstacle, and it's not a thing that's too difficult to to change. Even I thought getting onto some of the obstacles was quite high, and I'm quite tall. You so. Were tall. Yeah. I'm not very tall. I'm toolish. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it's not a hard thing to fix. I mean, what did they have last year? They had a couple of bigger steps, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, or even just, you know, just even one bigger step. Or even if they just had another scaffold bar going across them rigs, just mm -hmm. so they had something to stand on. You could use the step to get on that, and then straight up. It's mm -hmm. not going to slow down the taller people. Taller people can still jump 
into their obstacles and swing through mm -hmm. it's not going to slow any of the race down it just makes things a bit more yeah it's going to make things more competitive you can't yeah and the consistency thing is you know if, if it was dangerous because they saw people hurt themselves then it, it was a good idea to change the rule um it's hard for the people ahead to know that that was the reason why and that it was allowed and things it's just you think they'd come up with that before they start doing things in their exactly. in their original risk assessment you know so yeah so. like the barbed wire yeah. <laughs> so it's a really unfortunate and I, I i am sad if it's affected any positions um but the race is made up of lots of different scenarios which you can't kind of recreate um so it's hard to kind of control every single little thing sometimes but that one probably could have been managed better well as long as it gets better for next time i think is it yeah so there's a feedback form the British obstacle sports because obviously this is race like is twice organized. twice obviously this is organized by spartan race so that the feedback has to get back to them to make a change um but every race for the ukcr series is a British obstacle sports feedback form and i know some of that feedback's already come through there and we can help channel it to the people who can make the difference if you complete that for us Yes, thank you to everyone that, that's put some feedback and uh, as part of, of this. Uh, Chris, any other thoughts about the race, about about Spartan, anything that we've missed? I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, yeah, just uh, I think that's pretty much it from the, the way the race went and how it, how it should be. Do you remember what your what your picks were and how well you did? Oh, I, what? I My picks? Your picks. Oh, oh, oh. Who's hot? <laughs> He's hot. Oh it's yeah, the whole, I, I the think whole I bloody show. That. I think I won that. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I think Becky won enough. because <laughs> she, oh, yeah. she won. <laughs> mm. Did you get it spot on? I was gonna do the you know the online predictions that UKCR run on the Saturday night, but the thing wasn't working properly, so I didn't submit them all. Because at that point, I knew that Andrea was racing and. Um, Rachel and Rachel, Rachel, Rachel yeah because Rachel wasn't on, on our list and Rachel no, won and we haven't spent enough time talking about them super fast yeah it's a yeah. shame she wasn't on the list because she would have definitely been on the top pick she yeah. I remember seeing her last year race the beast and she was whip it yeah yeah so yeah I mean they were they were miles ahead you can look at the times um I think they had a good race and Fede was not far behind and uh, you know she was in the mix with them racing together as well um which is really exciting and I think Josie was quite close I was had Kate in my sights just about so I was kind of pleased with, with, with that um yeah some good battles yeah pretty good feel I think it will change again every race you know I don't think that's going to be always the same order next time series exciting yeah yeah completely different race next time mm. And also national awesome. trials awesome yeah. well thanks guys um we are going to be talking again very very soon because the next race up is very soon it's the nuclear challenge cup which is sunday uh, may the 14th um we'll be back next week probably as a bonus episode just to to uh, look at that um of course becky with home field advantage will be able to tell us all about the map and uh, maybe we can get some names of who's going to be running there too uh this was the spartan super uk ocr series recap thank you again to my co-host we've got chris shipley you can find him at uh on instagram at the obstacle race sorry obstacle race dude uh becky you can find becky on instagram uh she is uh the runner being uk of course you can follow spartan race at spartan race uk and also uh of course everyone wants needs to be a member of british obstacle sports to be part of the uk ocr series uh you can follow them on instagram at british obstacle sports of course you've got uk ocr you're already listening to this so you should be following them on all the different socials but if not if you just have a quick look for uk ocr you should be able to find them if you like what you hear and you want to support uk ocr uh, please do think about donating on a regular basis to patreon or if it's just the one-off you can do uh, buy me a coffee but of course in the case of alan and ian it's buy me a beer <laughs> this is the uk ocr who's hot series we'll be back next week to talk about nuclear challenge cup but from us for now it's goodbye and we'll talk to you very soon bye bye, bye. Welcome and thank you for downloading the latest UK OCR Who's Hot podcast. My name is Will Chung and we're here to be... Who is that's it? Beca that's become a tradition now, isn't it? It's always like the first few seconds. You don't need an introduction these days, or... No, I don't want to waste what's left. 
Um, this is the UK OCR Who's Hot series. We'll be back uh, next week to re recap. From a shadow to the sun rays and on and on we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways and on. See the